Hey folks, getting on the water here in a minute with Jameson Redding. It's gonna be fun. And I'll let you tell tell folks what we're we're getting ready to do. So we're down here in the I'd say a little south of Titusville, but in that Mosquito Lagoon area. We're not going to fish in the lagoon. Um, we got some weather coming in, some wind, so we're gonna hit a spot down here in the Banana River um, and see what we can do. But we've got the Savannah, the Salt Marsh Savannah, which is a 14 foot skiff, weighs about 150 pounds. Uh, it's about 40 inches wide at the beam and 44 at the deck. It's a really cool platform that I've been involved with, with uh, Mel from Salt Marsh. And we've got the Torquedo 1103 um, that I'm gonna steal from Jeff uh, when we leave because it is awesome. And I've been running it for the last couple of days, but today we're gonna go out, we're gonna go fishing, and we're gonna try to get some data on how far, how long, how fast, all that good stuff on the range and speeds of the Savannah partnered with the 1103 travel motor. spot I've never been before and what I really like about this setup again I've got my trolling motor and my and my outboard all in one package so I can stand and cover a lot of water and that's how I like to fish new water is just cover a lot of water and really look at you know what's out there what's changing look for things moving and I'm not even really going to change my bait until I start to see some fish react to it find some fish find some movement some bait whatever it is and then try to match that and see if I can't talk one into eating. But that's how I like to break it down and this allows me to really move and cover that water and, and learn a new area quickly. It's a real key accessory doing what I'm doing today to have the long tiller arm here and it just basically it's easy to just unplug the other one put the long arm on and it gives me several more inches so I can stand up here high and still reach this you know pretty easy to be able to make small adjustments as I'm going down the bank plus it gets me a little more forward on the boat which gives me more speed as we're going along here it's kind of neat to be able to look back and see the uh, display which gives me the range and my speed and, and I can kind of adjust that speed on the fly to, to increase my range. So if I wanna, if I'm looking at my chart, I know I wanna cover five miles or go five miles and I gotta make it back five miles plus have time to fish. I can set my speed accordingly and really conserve that battery life. If I'm not going far, then let it rip. I'm gonna do this in a big boat. Really is neat exploring with either kayaks or small boats. It's really hard to tell if we can even make it this far on Google. But we're getting in here pretty deep and there is a pond if we can make it into it. I don't know, you never know, it could have fish in it. 
when I was kind of researching what motor to go with and gas versus electric and this and that, you know, at first you look at it, okay, and you say, well, I can get a, a two and a half or three horsepower gas motor for a thousand bucks, brand new. And this motor costs, you know, twenty six ninety nine out the door. But this is a trolling motor and an outboard motor all in one. I can go as slow as we're going right now, even slower really, super quiet, or you know, I can motor up and really get to where I need to go quick. So you can't just compare the two. Here's a motor, here's a motor. You gotta go, okay, if I get the gas and I wanna be quiet, I've also gotta get a trolling motor. 55 pound thrust, saltwater grade trolling motor. You gotta add that to it. Then you gotta get a battery for that. And then you gotta look at range and how much gas and over the course of a couple of years, am I really still saving money? And when you add all that up, this boat, motor and trailer, the way I have it, is about 7,500 bucks. And when I did the motor, a Honda 2.3 horsepower, 55 pound thrust, Minn Kota saltwater, riptide, trolling motor, a battery, and then the gas and just maintenance cost over a few years. And I actually came out $500 cheaper with this setup than I would have if I had went the other route. And really that $500 But, I mean, I plug one thing in. I'm not charging a battery and having to stop and get gas. So it's quieter all around and it's lighter, a lot, a lot less weight when you really add up all the other components. My boat's less cluttered and ultimately I'm gonna save money. And if I keep it long enough, it'll eventually pay for itself and the savings over having to put gas and maintenance into the other things. So I think apples to apples this is the better choice.